Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Vale of Arran, another area of Westeros that was terribly neglected in Game of Thrones. So once again, House of the Dragon is showing me things that I wanted to see fucking years ago, notably Runestone, the seat of House Royce, and Daemon's wife, the bronze bitch, who I must say looks fucking badass in her armor. The Royce is being an extremely ancient house in the Vale, and you can see on her armor are the little etchings the, the fucking runes of the first men. It looks great. That's all I can say. It just, it looks awesome. It's stuff like this that we just never got to see in Game of Thrones because they cut so much of it. I mean, j just look at this fat dude from Game of Thrones. This is a Royce, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. Only it isn't. That's a random fat dude in armor that I found on Google Images. This is a Royce. Nah, I'm still fucking with you. <laughs> That's not a Royce either. But this is, this, this is Lord Royce. <laughs> you, you, you begin to see why I keep praising the armor design of the show. This is how it's supposed to fucking look. It's a, it, it's just a damn shame that the bronze bitch gets immediately murked. We only ever theorized that Daemon Targaryen was responsible for his wife's murder or accident. You can't see the air quotes, but accident. So yeah, nice to, uh, nice to get another example of an actually true telling of events that we only ever had vague questionable narratives on before. I was most distressed to hear of the Lady Rhea's tragic passing. And we go from one tragedy to another one entirely. And this one is, is just, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's like watching a car crash in slow motion, dude. It, 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 just, look at this, just look at this. Let us leave it all behind and see the world together. He's a simp, a simp! My white knight. I took an oath. I've broken it. I, I've, I've sold my, my, my white cloak. It is the only thing I have to my fucking name. Ah, uh, poor sweet Cole. Why? Why, buddy? Why? Oh, uh, I feel I feel for this damn bastard. Seduced by the royal cunt. And what a cunt she is. Because really, she got felt up by her uncle, got real horny, and then seduced and manipulated her bodyguard into having sex with her. And then discards him when he asks to run away with her. Because he doesn't want to be her whore. It's just like, damn, Cole, damn, buddy. You a simp, boy. <laughs> but really, fuck that bitch. Which, coincidentally, is something her future husband will not be doing very often, because... A sword swallower through and through. Each of us dines as we see fit. But I don't know what we expected from an actress whose name is literally Allcock. All cock a very unfortunate surname but she was made for this role apparently cole then like bless his heart he gets called in by the queen later on shitting himself assuming that the queen is talking about him but she's questioning him about damon sleeping with the princess it is of course unthinkable for me to question the virtue of the princess only for him to admit to sleeping with the princess it Says. happened your grace i have committed it my oath has been broken i have dishonored myself now, admittedly, Cole thought he was about to be caught out by the Queen, but he goes on not to ask for mercy, but pity. You may go. And Alicent lets him go, though that's not the end of it. Sir Kristen Cole, look at him. The man is fully cunt-struck. <laughs> <laughs> He's cunt-struck. <laughs> eh, I might use that for now on. Since Rainey's husband's boyfriend is uh, not going to be using it anymore. <laughs> Since Sir uh, Kristen decides to Oberon Martell the shit out of, uh, out of his boyfriend. <laughs> This was supposed to happen in a tournament, but I guess they already had a tournament in the first episode, so having another one would be a bit overkill. I don't mind the change, it's fine. Although it, it, it doesn't quite make too much sense to the fact that Cole is apparently just allowed to... He isn't, he isn't arrested or anything. He just killed a, a knight for no apparent reason and is just allowed to fuck off to the godswood? Question mark? If he died in a tawny, then a lack of repercussions would make sense because people die in tawnies all the time. Accidents, air quotes, happen all the time. It makes less sense here, but I'll forgive it. Because Cole has gone to the Godswood and he's he's going to kill himself. He, he's, he's going to commit Sekapu. Am I saying that right? I, I don't know. A weeb will correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. Rhaenyra of House Targaryen to be man and wife. And forever. Sir Kristen. 
and Alicent arrives just in time to save Cole from taking his own life. This is Cole's episode. I have to hand it to him. Maybe I'm slightly biased because I too have dealt with a bunch of toxic, manipulative, shrewd, fucking evil, manipulative. I said manipulative twice. Cunts. I've dealt with cunts. So I sympathize with Cole in this. I genuinely do. Fuck that bitch. Fuck that bitch to the seven hells and back. That woman redefined what it means to be a whore. STDs were like Pokemon for her. She had to catch them all. So my hat goes off to Allison for this, at a girl. And we finally get to see the formation of the greens and the blacks. Thanks to Allison finally wearing her green dress. Although I think we were supposed to see this ages ago. Her wearing this dress is the beginning of the schism in the court. The greens supporting the queen and her sons and the blacks being for Targaryen black supporting the princess. And I, for one, am firmly in the party of the Greens. Thank you very much. Cue the comments calling me a racist. Well, the joke's on you, motherfucker. I say you're racist for being discriminative against green people. See? See? Yeah. Fucking greenest. Greenest bastards. A lot of you. Greenest bastards. How dare you? Which brings us conveniently back on topic to the actual great feast, or the wedding feast, which has so much shit going on in it. Starting with the Royces, the cousin to Damon's late wife, who had a accident in the Vale, and Damon's bid for the Lordship of Runestone. Teach you about my inheritance. What inheritance? Before subsequently trying to seduce another dragon girl. Has anybody ever told you you're nearly as pretty as your brother? Oh, you flatter me, my prince. Which brings me to something which is actually really fucking well done. Because, and I shit you not, the order with whom people dance during this feast is actually foreshadowing who they're going to marry slash be with. As Damon starts dancing with Elena Valerion before cutting in and taking his niece away from Harwin Strong. And considering that the coming conflict is called the Dance of Dragons and this is all being foreshadowed in a dance, I think it's exceptionally well done. And it's not the only instance of foreshadowing. There was an instance in the previous episode that I missed, where a fortune teller asks the princess if she wishes to know her death. You wish to know your death, child? And I find all of that very well done. <laughs> Get it? Well done? Eh? Extra crispy? Eh? 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 Okay, I'll go away now. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, and foreshadowing aside, there are two other things that I should point out. First and foremost is the fact that I think this is Mushroom. There's a dwarf playing some music. I think that's actually Mushroom. Whom, for those of you who don't know, is a dwarf who served the court as a fool for King Viserys and those who followed him. Also serving as one of our unreliable sources on the Dance of Dragons. So I'm assuming that this dwarf is in fact Mushroom. Or it's just another dwarf and I'm dwarfist. It's not my fault. All dwarves look the same, okay? Okay? How dare you! And last but not least, I would like to actually acknowledge, because I don't think I have yet, that the actor who plays Viserys Targaryen does a bloody phenomenal job. Like, seriously, it's, it's spot on. Like, bloody well done. I think I have actually acknowledged it before with the relationship between him and his daughter. It actually feels genuine. I just felt the need to, uh, to say this before he, you know, dies. And when the king is dead, ladies and gentlemen, long live the king. You will be our king. This war is far from over. 